Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This evening, I will be drinking the Melvin Scenario Robust Porter. I suppose it's a good thing I uh, tend to do lengthy preambles, because uh, as you can see, there's a fair bit ahead on this. Uh, I let this come up to room temperature, forcibly, via a, a container of water. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've had a few Melvin beers. It's interesting, so color. Looking through this at my lights, um, it has a kind of a dark ruby color, which is really cool. It's quite nice. I'm not sure how well that'll come out inside like a uh, a room. Uh, also, yes, it is quite dark outside, but hey, I have relatively powerful light, so I'm blinded right now. I can tell the general direction in which the camera is because it's the direction the light's coming from. Um, also, to those who have watched my previous videos, and if you haven't, you know who you are, go watch them. Um, careful what you give your daughter permission to do because she might be sitting on the other side of the glass, you know, making faces at you while you try to, uh, make a funny video so uh eh, right at you Ada <laughs> anyways so this is a robust porter by title um, it has oats it has uh, wheat and um, has midnight wheat too which is kind of interesting yeah roasted malts I mean obviously unlike the dark Belgian beer that I tried recently. This has its color derived from the traditional or more common, not traditional, more common um, color source for beers. That is the malt color, the level to which the grains were roasted. And so I'm, ex I'm expecting some very nice roasty character from this. Porter versus stout. I'm not really going to go into that now, except to say that Porters, uh, that stouts are derived from porters. A stout was originally a stout porter, so it was a strong porter. And so this kind of predates the stout, uh, stylistically and historically. And these are named for the, the porters, the people, the men and women, who carried luggage, usually on their shoulders, possibly if they were well off enough with a cart. Um, who carried luggage and freight uh, primarily around seaside towns in England. They were called porters. I assume they were called porters other places just in whatever language was the, um, the language of that area. But that's the term. So it is a, historically, it is a filling, strengthening, uh, warming beer for hardworking blue-collar types. So that's its history. This one in particular... Scenario, I think they were going for a, like a, a table game, like an RPG or D&D &D kind of uh, uh, style moniker for the, from, from the, the term scenario. And so there's all sorts of stuff on the can about the story they're telling. Um, what I'm smelling is roasty malts. You know what you'd expect from a, a dark beer. But it's mostly like a, a darkly toasted grain flavor, which that's what you want. There's a little bit of a, an earthiness to it as well. Maybe some like brown grass. Not, not like dirty rotten, but you know, dying grass. And there's also some, like some, deep down there's like a, uh, a, like a burnt sugar kind of a smell to it as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, it might be some of those similar uh, Fuggles or Goldings or um, uh, other you know, European style, more earthy hop varieties, giving that kind of earthiness. 
Anyways, let's go in and see how it tastes. Ooh. Oh, interesting. So what I'm picking up, there is maybe a, a blackberry syrup uh, fading almost to a like a sweet mola sweet molasses. Um, there is a dark toasty bread flavor. There is um, this really nice like like just roasted character going through it, but not roasted meat. More of a just generic. It is roasted. I'm really sorry if that beeping is throwing anybody off. I'm probably going to have a devil of a time figuring out how to minimize it in in uh, as I edit this up. Oh, there we are. Yay. Okay. Um, there's also an interesting vegetable character to this. Not in an unpleasant way. It's just kind of layers. It's these, these kind of soft, round layers, which are all kind of playing together nicely. And I'm sure I could probably get into the the nth level of nuance regarding the the little tiny bits of whatever I'm able to suss out of the of the flavor of this. Uh, suffice to say, there's a lot going on. It is a surprisingly complex beer, while not being a um, you have to think about me, right? I could sit and just enjoy this as a porter, as a as a basic, tasty, roasty, dark sweet enjoyable porter but there's also enough depth in here as it is warmed it is i'm guessing it's up to upper 50s probably as far as temperature goes um like I'm, it's not feeling particularly cold in my hands even it's it's cool but it's not cold in my hands um it has like some really really nice stuff going on there's there's dark toast there's maybe the barest hint of chocolate there's a a memory of coffee um a uh yeah a lot of stuff i think the the thing that gets me most it, it kind of has the, like the middle the big middle is like like dark bread that's been toasted and that's really nice like it, it's a very very beautiful and without being luxurious it's it's substantial like you can tell they they really put thought into the name because it is a robust porter it, it has this deliciously big middle that's tasty and inviting and enjoyable and i like that that's good stuff this is let's see melvin's scenario robust porter here you go here we go yo uh, sorry can art can can text um <laughs> i'm enjoying it quite a lot i'm matthew i've been chewing the roux and i'll catch y'all on the flip side